Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can uh, make this parametric uh, surface uh, by using the patch uh, component, which I'm going to explain. We're also going to use the contour to produce a series of a sectioning curve, uh, divide that into a series of surface splits, as you can see here. And then we're going to look at a technique of how we can divide them into two set of groups of uh, true and false and as you can see here I can bake that into layer 1 and bake that into layer 2 in Rhino and use that in my project uh, so actually what we want to do here is to design a parametric surface uh, using a graph mapper as you can see here uh, before we design this uh, surface we have to turn it off which I'm going to explain uh, use a graph mapper. We can even combine a graph mapper. For example, if I just use two of them, uh, you can see that it can be combined. I'm going to explain that uh, in this tutorial. Uh, and then we just have to uh, play with these uh, parameters and a circle to design uh, the final patch. Uh, okay, let me explain this step by step. The first part of the algorithm, which you can download from our uh, website ghfile.com uh, is a simple circle as you can see here this is the radius and uh, what we want to do here is to divide this circle into a series of parts uh, so what I have used here is the shatter command you can find it in the uh, curve division shatter uh, we have used a range and because it's between 0 and 1 uh, if we right click here and reparameterize so it's between 0 and 1 uh, we can use the range command by default it's between 0 and 1 and divide it into three uh, divisions for example so it's going to be 0, 0 0.3, 0 0.6 and 1 and if you give it to the T this is going to divide the circle into a series of uh, divisions uh, what we wanted to do here is actually divide these parts uh, into a series of points so you just have to divide them uh, for example this is going to be divided into 200 points uh, let me explain here by just selecting one of these shatters so you can understand it better okay so assume that we have this part we divide it we also get the start and the end okay the reason we are uh, selecting the start and the end is because we want to find the location of this division points uh, to the start and the end so we just have to use this closest point component uh, what it does is actually these points are trying to search for example this is the point we are looking here as the p input uh, this is the cloud okay the cloud is the start and the end uh, so actually this point is going to search between these start and the end and look which one is closer so this one is maybe closer and give the distance out uh, so for example this point is also going to search from this and this obviously this one is closer so this is going to get the distance out so actually this remap number bound and the target which is between 0 and 1 is going to scale all of these distances uh, so maybe they are between 0 and 25 I guess because the bound says uh, they are going to scale being scaled to 0 and 1 be uh, the reason we are scaling this to 0 and 1 is because we want a graph mapper. Uh, the graph mapper, which you can find from a uh, params menu input uh, graph mapper, uh, by default is between uh, 0 and 1. Okay, so uh, that's why we use the remap numbers. Uh, for the graph mapper, you can just right click and select different graph types. So I've used, I think this is the sine wave. Well, you can make this a sine wave. Okay, uh, after uh, remapping them by the remap numbers and graph mapper we just multiply that with a number the reason we are multiplying is because we want to increase that one to maybe another number so it's not between uh, for example uh, 0 and 1 it's between uh, 0 12.8 and again 0 okay so that is a multiplication we move them in the z direction and we have this nice little movement you can see here so remember that this is actually what it does. Before we start the tutorial, uh, I want to tell you that we have added two extra lessons to the para course. Uh, as you can see here, one is about point attractor and curve attractor on a mesh uh, uh, for a parametric waist, and at the end you can give it uh, thickness, you can define a plane to cut it. There's also a simple revolve 
uh, component which you can make the parametric waves more controllable and change the location of the point and the curve attractors. The second lesson is about a simple uh, minimal surface generator with, uh, by defining a series of points and mirroring a curve, intersecting, trimming, uh, and using a plugin uh, we can generate a minimal uh, parametric surface uh, and in that lesson you can learn uh, how to make that step by step by just uh, rebuilding the curve, defining points and mirroring the base curve. And uh, let's get back those shatters into the input. So we say that we want them for all of those three sections and you can see that it's okay. So remember that's why we grafted this because uh, we want them into groups. Okay, uh, after we have graphed this, uh, we have this uh, curve interpolation. So we just convert those points into a curve. Okay, there is also a rebuild component. So for example, if I have a really complicated graph, for example, this sigmoid log it, uh, something like this, and you want to make this a little bit uh, simple, you just have to rebuild it. Uh, so I just add this multiplication and you can see that instead of the main curve, you can get a more smooth curve like this. So you can see that the control points are reduced and it simplifies the base curve. Uh, anyway, we're not going to use that, but if you want to, you can simply give that to this input, which is the curve. Uh, okay, after we have this, I have added a switch. So when I put this to true, what it does, it's uh, going to get outputs from here, but when I put it to false, it's going to delete everything. I've added a uh, inversion of this call pattern here. So if you want to see the preview, you always can uh, see it from here. But when you put this to true, this is going to give nothing out. So the preview is going to turn off. You can see it here that we don't have anything, but instead we have a flow of the algorithm from here. Okay, what we have used here is the patch component from the surface uh, freeform uh, patch. Uh, we give those curves to the input here. Uh, you can see that here. The point is, I also added a point, so that is going to be the center of the circle. We start it from here and just move that a little bit up in the Z direction. So if I want to change that, I prefer to turn the uh, patch off, move the point and then turn this on. Okay, because this is going to be slow. I added the switch and now you can see it's a new surface. Uh, another thing about this uh, patch thing is that you can see it's trying to uh, uh, make a NURB surface from this curve. So uh, curves like this one, which is actually really sharp, is not going to give you a good result. So for example, I'm going to stay with conic, maybe something like that, that that's going to give you really unique uh, results. Remember that you can change the number of steps you want and also the radius. And remember the point location is going to also help you to uh, explore new results or new ideas. Okay, after uh, putting this to true, uh, another thing uh, that I want to add about the patch is that if you want a really, really uh, a more exact result, uh, you have to increase this uh, flexibility. Maybe instead of one, you can give it a 10. Uh, one of the things that's going to help is this uh, increasing of the flexibility. You can see it's going to give you better results. Uh, here you can see that this is basically the spans, so it's trying to add uh, 13 spans in the UV direction to uh, make those uh, NURB surfaces through these curves. If you want to increase them, you can increase that number, but beware, uh, don't increase it on the uh, patch because it's going to slow it down. Just turn it off, increase it, and turn it on again. So that's really important. Anyway, that's going to give you uh, the base uh, NURB surface. I've also uh, used the Pufferfish plugin and the component uh, is from, I think this is for the surface here, and it's called plane trim surface. Uh, we want to trim this surface by a plane. So I've defined an XY plane and uh, given it a point. We can move that a little bit up. And what it does, it's actually trying to uh, trim the patch with this plane which is an XY plane. If you want to see it, just turn this on. This is the plane. 
and this is really helpful especially if we want to uh, maybe uh, redesign the surface and give it a flat uh, maybe column like uh, curves you can also uh, use the control shift to select these curves for example and extrude them down maybe and design something like this so if I go to the rendered mode you can see it's also going to give you some options so that trimming thing is really great to give you the final results okay uh, after trimming this uh, let's just turn off this part the next part is how we can use the contour to produce those sections it's really easy you just uh, use the contour uh, the starting point is going to be the point we have trimmed it so it's actually going to start with the bottom the Z direction is going to be the trimming uh, and distance is obviously going to be for example if I increase uh, decrease that to one it's going to give you more sections and you can see it here I think for this example uh, I put this to two it's going to give us more interesting surfaces because it's just like two curves at the start and the end and anyway uh, now we have this um, contour we have to split it so you can use the intersection physical surface split to split the surface with these uh, contours uh, contour curve sections but remember you have to flatten it so all of those uh, curves trim the surface at once so that is going to give you uh, those surfaces uh, okay after producing this surface uh, I've also added a, a bit of wireframe if you want to see the wireframe anyway. Uh, the next part is how we can divide these surface splits into groups of uh, dispatches. I mean, so for example, this is going to go into one group and this is going to go to the second group, the one group. So this is like dispatching them into, uh, maybe we want to just give this a black and white pattern, for example. So after producing splitting a part, uh, what I have done is that for each of this surface splitting parts, for example, this one, let me explain it on this one. Okay, so for understanding this part, I've selected uh, a list item of 20 for this one, for example, and maybe the second one, just two of those surfaces. When you use the surface split, the index of those surfaces are really, really messed up. So for example, this can be zero, this can be one, this can be two, this can be three. So the reason we are doing this is because we want to sort them. Uh, anyway, uh, let's just give this to the input so I can explain what's happening here. Uh, I've used the BREF wireframe to get their uh, curves. Okay, uh, find the mid edge. The mid edge is not really that important. I just wanted to extract a point from the borders. So that's the reason I've used the curve middle. Deconstruct that to the Z. So I want to get the Z component of these uh, points and then sort them from the smallest z to the uh, biggest z that's going to sort the z and then pick up the first one which is going to be the smallest z the reason I'm doing this is because I want to get uh, this uh, point which is at the bottom of each of these sections so that's going to give you uh, the z for each of these this is like two for the two of them okay but if you give it to all of them it's going to give it for all of the parts Okay, after producing the Z sections, again, I'm going to sort them from smallest to biggest because it's going to give you the Z of this part. So this is going to be maybe Z0. This is going to be Z1. This is going to be Z2. This is going to be Z3. So it's really messed up. Again, I'm sorting them from smallest to biggest. So that is going to sort. And this sorting tool is going to sort also my surface split. So I have to take these steps to sort all of my surfaces uh, from here. So if I give this uh, list item to the sorted surfaces here, you can see that this is going to give you uh, the surfaces from uh, the smallest Z to the top. Okay. So that's why we use this sort list to sort them down uh, another thing that is going to help you to get good results is that uh, for example this is the sorted z of those surfaces and for example uh, just take a look at this uh, these two numbers okay these two numbers are really really near so it's like 10 point 
uh, till the end but uh, the last digit is a little different okay because we want to put all of those with the same z in one group you can see that it's not going to work for this one or for example for this one uh, it's going to assume that they are in two different heights so what i have done is that i have uh, removed the digits with this section and for example i'm going to say i just want one digits or two digits uh, after the number so what you can do here uh, is split the text with the separator dot so it's going to give you those numbers into this is the technique i always use the number and the digits then uh, this is the number this is the digits i'm going to uh, work with the digits and for example for the digits uh, I'm going to say from the index is zero, I just want one digit. So it's going to, for example, for the rest, give you like one. So if I increase that, it's going to give me 103. So just play with this based on your project and it's going to give you the number of digits. Uh, then I'm going to join them back uh, with the joint uh, dot and convert them into a number. So that's the way I have Found it's going to work and this is going to be the height with only one digit so you can just increase or decrease that number if you want to uh, work with that okay after producing those uh, numbers uh, this technique is going to put them into a, a group so for example you can see uh, five of them let me connect a uh, param viewer to this uh, five of them are going to go in one branch. If I simplify that, that's going to show you. Uh, three of them is going to go to the next branch till the end. So that is really valuable. The index, you usually convert the number into a set. And then uh, from the set member index, uh, so create a set and then mem member index, give the numbers to the set, give the created set to the member and that is going to give you the index and then just select them with a list item uh, to show you that this is a really helpful I'm going to connect uh, explode tree to the output right click and match outputs so here you can see that uh, these are the groups for the first group the second group the third group ninth group and they are all in one height okay so I think this is really useful technique uh, you can just change this algorithm uh, if you want to anyway and now that we have those surfaces into a series of groups we can dispatch them into two groups so for example this is going to go to the first one the second one and the third one so this is going to be true this is going to go to false again this is going to go to true and this is going to go to false and then we have the final results uh, to do that, you can simply give a tree statistic to the output. It's going to give you all of the path here. Uh, so these are going to be all the path. We just have to use a dispatch uh, true false pattern. So this is going to go to true false true false true false. These are going to go to the true. These are going to go to the falses. And we just have to use the tree branch to put them into two groups. Uh, now you can just turn that on. Turn off everything and we can bake that into layer one for example and bake that into layer two in rhino if you want to use it in your project so now you can see that that you have them into two groups uh, and you can use that technique in your projects too and thanks for watching remember to like this video subscribe to our channel so you get notified about our new lessons and see you next time bye